Hello, Glendale community and friends. This is Pastor Stephanie. It is Tuesday of Holy Week, and we are continuing with our Stations of the Cross. This week, or this day, we are talking about Jesus and the Garden of Gethsemane. So I will start us off by reading Matthew 26, verses 36 through 46. And I will go ahead and share that on the screen so you can follow along. It says, Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. This is our scripture for today. Before we um, get away from this, I wanted to show you a picture um, from the Garden of Gethsemane. Hi. And um, this is a picture I took last year when I was in Israel in January of the Garden of Gethsemane. And we weren't allowed inside, so I took this picture from the outside. But as you can see, there's a lot of olive trees, and this would have looked somewhat like it did back in the day when Jesus was there with the disciples and they were falling asleep. So in this story that we just read, we kind of see the sorrow that is on Jesus's heart as he is preparing for the cross, knowing what is to come. And so he's praying to God and these disciples who are with him keep falling asleep, presumably because they don't know exactly what's coming. They don't know the importance of what Jesus is doing. But Jesus is greatly troubled, and so he is in the garden praying to God. And even as Jesus kind of prays for this, this pain and suffering to be taken away from him, he asks God, yet not as I will, but as you will. And Jesus says, may this cup be taken from me. And this is the cup that God has asked him to bear. And even though he, I imagine, did not want to do any, did not want to endure any of this um, pain of Holy Week, he did because that is what God asked him to do. And of course, we know ultimately in the end that through Jesus' death, new life, arose from the resurrection. So this day, as you reflect on this passage, I invite you to pour a cup of grape juice if you have it on hand. I know many of you probably don't. I did not have any on hand. You can grab any other type of juice. You can even grab a glass of water. If that's what you have. Um, I looked in my fridge. I did not have any grape juice, but I did find a little bit of pomegranate juice. So I poured some of that into my cup. And when, once you pour your cup, I invite you to take some time and just hold your cup in your hand and reflect on what is poured in there, but also reflect on perhaps 
What cup God may be asking you to carry this week? And I know with these times that we are living in, that many of us are bearing cups that we don't necessarily want to carry. For some people, um, especially like our healthcare workers and our essential workers, the cup they may be bearing um, is having to care for so many different people and put their own selves at risk, their health at risk. Um, but all of us, I think in some ways are bearing some type of cup. Some, for some of us that might be just staying home, not being able to see our friends and family in person. Um, we are making that sacrifice so that we can help keep others healthy. So that might be a cup that you are bearing this week. And as you reflect on whatever cup that is that God may be asking you to bear, I invite you, if you are someone who regularly journals, to write about that in your journal. You may want to talk with someone online, friend or family member, about what you are thinking about and what you are experiencing as you think about the cup that Jesus is asking you to bear this week during Holy Week. So as you continue to think about that, um, I will close us in prayer today. Let us pray. God, we thank you once again for the great sacrifice that Jesus made. We thank you for that prayer that he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, showing us how real he, how real his pains were and his struggle was during that time, showing us how much he identified with us as humans in the pain and suffering that each of us face. Lord, this week I know many of us are bearing the weight of many different cups. We pray for our healthcare workers who continue to battle on the front lines of the virus. We pray for all those who, essential workers who continue to work so that people have food and the things that they need. We pray for all those who may be bearing the cup of isolation or um, being alone in this time, Lord. We ask that you remind them that you continue to be there with them just as you were with Jesus all the way to the cross. And Lord, we pray this Holy Week um, as we bear the cups that you have asked us to bear, that we don't forget that Easter is coming, that resurrection and new life is on its way, Lord, and is available through Jesus Christ. So we lift up this prayer to you in Jesus' name. Amen.